I grew up in the local area, and I'd, I remember always staring at the mill and thinking, what an unusual building. You know, it's, it's one of these buildings that really does stand out because there's no other building like it. I was very sad to see the building looking the way it was. It just looked really, really unloved and uncared for. Um, and it seemed also like the wrong type of interest had had kind of established itself there. The first proper memory I have of the Wimmer was when I was um, uh, given a flat that overlooks the windmill. And when I walked into my living room and I looked out the window, I couldn't believe there were these sails of a windmill. So that was right back in 1984. And um, so I rushed around to find out where this windmill was and I found it standing in this rather dilapidated park, looking in a rather a sorry state. Brixton Windmill is actually two mills in one. When the mill was built in 1816, uh, this was all open fields. There was no prison, there was no council estate, and it was all just open fields. But by the mid 19th century, it had been very, it got very built up. So the Ashbury family, who owned the mill, decided in 1862 to move to Mitcham to a water mill there because they had a more, more reliable uh, source of power there. But in 1902, the lease on the water mill ran out, so they came back to Brixton and Windmill, and they uh, installed this provender mill here and it's thanks to the provender mill actually that um, Brixton and Windmill actually carried on working right up until 1934 uh, and Brixton is the last surviving windmill um, in Lambeth and so we are very lucky that it still exists today. The windmill belongs to Lambeth Council. They have the duty to look after it and of course it is a very important building. It's a historic building. It's a grade two star listed building. When there was a real opportunity to um, influence the council through our community groups to put some money um, up to actually do a consultation about the development of this park and particularly about the restoration of the windmill, I got involved. And out of that very first consultation, which the council gave a small grant for, we um, formed, the, the Friends of Windmill Gardens were formed. We needed to kind of sharpen up uh, on exactly what our aims and objectives are as a community. We had, to, we had to set up as a body in order to kind of bring this project forward. We were looking at the master plan, which is basically the restoration of the mill, to have an education centre there, and also to, to bring the park to a really good standard so local uh, people, children, etc., could really enjoy this uh, amazing, unique space. We, we put in our bid, and uh, you know, our, our chairman came back and said, you know, that we weren't successful and um, the whole sort of group of friends of windmill gardens would not accept that and I think that is the drive and that is the passion uh, there's, there's something in each and every one of us who had worked all these years to say no this is not happening we will not happen we will we will demonstrate to you why this should happen and I think that we qualified it and, and um, the lottery looked at it again and they could see that, uh, you know, how people felt. There was a festival organised by that very first uh, outreach group uh, which started a series of summer festivals that we've held on and off most years since 2003, 2004. And these festivals have always proved very, very popular. They're family fun festivals. So we try and do as many public activities in the park as we can and we've also gone out quite consistently ever since the Friends of Windmill Gardens were formed to the rest of Lambeth. So we go to the Lambeth Country Show every year and um, campaign there to let people know about Brixton's Windmill which we always describe as Brixton's best kept secret because um, lots of people just are amazed when you tell them there is a windmill right here in the middle of uh, uh, very, very busy Brixton. The actual opening of the mill was absolutely fantastic. It was absolutely amazing. And you felt very moved. Um, I was, I, I kind of like uh, direct theatre and stuff like that and also act in these plays that we put on at the mill, which is like a restoration play. And all of our actors were walking down Brixton Hill. I was praying that people would turn up, thinking, oh my God, I hope some, somebody turns up for the opening of the mill. And I think I turned around and saw roughly about two to three thousand people 
it was a real moving uh, point in my life. And people from all walks of life, you know, the most extraordinary uh, headdresses and costumes of, of Nigerian women, um, and all the different colorful uh, characters that we have in Brixton. Um, it, was, it was like um, the world had come together in Brixton. We certainly had our MP there, uh, Shaka. Uh, he was there and he opened the actual mill. We also invited um, Henry Ashby, who's the great, 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 great grandson of, um, of the original miller. Probably we're going to have to consider various options in the future of the windmill. But long term, maybe we're going to have to look at a community trust, or maybe things will change and local authorities will have more money to look after these very precious uh, buildings which really belong to the community and should be preserved for the community and that means you need someone who, who you know an organization that is going to really uh, take care of it. I think the friends are very keen, very determined but there's a lot of money involved in looking after a historic building like this so we don't know yet what the complete future is but I'm sure local people will want to see it preserved because they really love this building.